Welcome to this week's update on the iguana cage. I filled the space between the tree and the vine with foam. This way when the iguana is climbing, she's less likely to get her claw stuck. There are also less nooks and crannies to have to work the waterproof sealant in. This is going to make it less likely for water to leak in. I had to be patient while applying the spray foam. I did a little bit at a time, I'd let it dry, and then I'd do a little bit more. After the spray foam was dry, I then carved away most of the foam, leaving just a relief of the vines. This will give it a nice look, as if the tree and the vine have been there forever and have grown into one. I also made some roots out of aluminum foil. This is to break up the monolithic look of the rock and create some lines and add more color to the area. Again, to give the look that the tree has been here for a very long time. Originally I had some plastic plant pots embedded into the rock. However, with close observation, I realized that's going to be near impossible to keep those plants alive, uh, keeping a wild iguana in the cage. I went ahead and spray foamed some fake ferns in place that I got at Hobby Lobby. For a fake fern, they're pretty good quality and as a fake plant, I think they look fairly realistic. All right, we're ready to go get some coffee and then we're gonna go to the store and get some paint. We're at Elevate Coffee in Hermitage. We're gonna get some coffee, then we're gonna get to the store. So I messed up. I thought that uh, there was a Michaels in the shopping center and it turns out it's a Joann's fabric. But I'll go see if they have paint. Nothing of sub substance at uh, Joann's. Everything was very small, so we're gonna go Try Michael's. First things first, I'm going to cover all the surfaces with black paint. It is important to cover all surfaces with the black paint. As you work into lighter colors, you're going to do less and less. So here we are a week later, and I had to redo some stuff. Originally, I painted the tree, I went ahead and did the first coat of acrylic paint and I did it black but when I did that I saw that there were pinholes in the paint. I knew if there were pinholes in the black paint this meant that there would be pinholes in the clear coat and that there would be potential for leaks. So I went ahead and got some dry lock at the hardware store. This is really good stuff. I painted uh, the whole thing with the white coat and then I tinted it with acrylic paint. Because dry lock is a waterproof paint that has color, as I'm painting it, I can see if there are any pinholes and cover the entire surface. Now that I've covered all surfaces with multiple layers of dry lock, I can go ahead and paint everything black, knowing that it's waterproof now. I still might go ahead and do a coat of clear epoxy over the final product, but I now know if there's any pinhole that is very unlikely that it will water will get all the way through. An added bonus with the dry lock is that it has little grits of sand in the paint that gives the surface a nice texture which the iguana can use to rub her head on and help her shed and also help keep her nails filed. So I have a big paint brush for covering most of the surface area. However, a small br paintbrush is also important for getting into nooks and crannies and sometimes it's faster with a small paintbrush because you're not spending so much time trying to wiggle the paint into a crack. Something to take into consideration. Alright. 
Now that we have all the surfaces covered with dry lock and we have all of the surfaces painted with black acrylic, we're ready to start building up the texture of the rock. We're gonna start off with some dark gray and we're gonna use a sea sponge to stipple the paint on. We're gonna do that to break up the black. After that, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a lighter gray and we're gonna do the same process and stipple it on top of the dark gray just to break up the dark gray a little bit more. When we do this coat, we don't need to go as evenly across the surface, but we wanna do it a little bit more randomly to give it that natural look. I'm also using a dry brush technique on the textured surfaces like the branches. That's all I got for this video. Stay tuned and I'll make a video on how I painted the colors and the textures of the tree. Thanks for watching.